I'm honest with you, this is super weird to say, but uh, Merry Christmas to y'all. I know it's December 24th, a lot of you do not celebrate Christmas on this day, but here in Germany on Christmas Eve we celebrate Christmas and the 25th and 22nd. Of course we do celebrate there too, but for us it really starts today. Well actually, <laughs> that's why it's a bit weird, because I, I, past me, the, the film me, is um, in December 16th, so, you know, I cannot film live, but it feels so weird. Um, okay, enough rambled, you've seen the title, and we are going to do today... Okay, enough rambled, you've seen the title, I will now put on every makeup that I ranked as my number one on my face to create, actually, the makeup look that I would consider from the ranking the best look you can achieve. So I didn't rank a specific eye primer, so I'm using the one that I'm just currently working my way through. This is the uh, Rare Beauty one. It's okay, it's more mediocre, I guess. It's nothing I would instantly repurchase, but it's good enough to use up. My number one ranked primer is the Tom Ford Tracer Soft Matte Primer. I just love this bitch so much. I actually had to like contain myself a bit to not use this. <laughs> because I wanted to have something left for this video and um, I don't like the fact that you just cannot see how much is left in here, but the way it kind of squirts out, I actually expect this to be empty by the end of the year if I keep on using this. I also didn't rank a spot concealer because I do only had at this point the NARS creamy matte thing and this is empty now actually, so spoiler for the empties next month. And now I'm using the REM Sweetener Concealer, which is actually an amazing spot concealer. Under the eyes, I see how people just hated this because it is so fucking dry. But that level of dryness I actually need as my spot concealer. It's really, really good. To be honest, this is a potential repurchase um, spot concealer. Depends on the price at the end because the NARS stuff I can get on sale a, a lot of times throughout the um, throughout the year throughout the, throughout the year, but this one is like always around 20 euro. I am actually just done preparing my palette ranking because the look that I will put on today you already saw two days ago in the palette ranking video. And here it is, the one that made it to the number one, and I don't know what else to say about this. I probably said all of the good things already in the ranking, but just admire this beauty again. I love this palette, this got me. Like, the moment I saw the picture, the moment I heard about those descriptions about the palette, I fell in love. All the looks that I have done so far with this palette were quite bold and dark and today I want to go more for a light take on this palette because I feel like a lot of people might be intimidated by a blue color story but I'm, I'm certainly not but I see how this can can make you a little bit like anxious like what the fuck am I supposed to do with blue eyeshadow so let me just use this palette to create a Okay, the vision. Let's paint the vision. I want to have a frosty lake vibe in the evening. That's what I want to achieve. And I'm taking quite a fluffy brush and I start with the shade Snowfall, which is a, a very, very light blue that has a lot of gray tones in it. And I very sloppy apply this throughout my transition area. But I do build this up quite harsh. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna see this. I wanna feel the frost, you know? I'm now taking a smaller blending brush and I go into, what's it called, icicle. I look a bit down and then I start blending into the crease and underneath this, uh, like, bone thingy here. Like, pushing the brush a bit into that fold. I'm now taking one of those flat brushes and I um, put it into clear skies, which is a very very dark blue And I just you know just wiggle it through and then I use this and press it into the lashes like that Just as a dark contrasty moment I feel like not a lot of people do this nowadays that way. It seems to be a very outdated 2015 makeup vibe, but I still like this technique a lot. And uh, keep the brush because we need that later on. 
I mean, not as if you're going to throw away your brushes, but uh, maybe you put them in a pile of dirty brushes or whatever. I just applied some trusty glitter glue and now we're using one of the most beautiful shades in this palette all over the lid. Usually I do pair like three to four different shimmers depending on the look that I go, but today we're only using winter solstice all over the, the lid. The, the face I wanted to say. I mean, I, I wish I could because it's pretty, but I won't. Just all over the lid. <sighs> I mean... How is this legal to create an eyeshadow that looks like this? Uh -uh. Shouldn't be legal. I would love to deepen up this shimmer on the lid, but I won't, so let's clean this up now. Some of the shadow that I pressed into the lashes now is on the low waterline, but that is absolutely no problem because we are going to use a, like, color in the waterline anyway so just let it sit there if it doesn't bother you. I just applied some Rare Beauty under eye brightener. I did not rank this at some ranking in the series but I did rank my uh, under painting glow primers and the one that won, oh that, that's a little hard to say, the one that won Okay, you know what I mean, was the Isamaya Skin Lac. And um, a lot of you agreed with me that this actually looks like um, sperm. It is what it is. So let me just oh, apply this. It, it, it already, by the first moment that I tap this on my face, just looks fucking awesome. This looks like a duochrome <laughs> shimmer. So let me just blend this all over the face. The only downside is since this is very liquidy and watery, it kind of rubs off the concealer a bit, so I have to be a bit careful in those areas. And the foundation that won the first place for best foundation of 2023 is my trusty Chanel Sublimage Le Temps foundation. This is a 150 euro motherfucker. I don't know if a foundation really should cost that much money, but it is an amazing one. They do have also a Supplemage foundation in a pump, like in a like regular bottle with a pump. And I think that I will put this on my wish list. So when I'm done with my no buy, I will probably get this because this is also 150 euro, so quite expensive too. Uh, but the reviews, they are very, very like hit or miss. Some said it's way too glowy, it's way too much. The other says it slides off their faces. And then there is the other side that just says it's the most amazing foundation they've ever tried. So if you have tried the Sublimage in the bottle, please let me know how you feel about this. I feel so perfected, it's, it's amazing. And I think you can especially here see, it does not matter how much your foundation is. It does not matter if it's Chanel, if it's MAC or Avlon. If you have certain skin concerns, no matter what foundation you own will cover this. They will always kind of peek through. You can layer them unblended on, like Meredith Shitbury, then it probably will cover. But if you use a normal amount of makeup, these will still peek through. But you know what? This actually makes you look like a human being. So please do not feel like, oh my God, I'm doing something wrong with my foundation. I see those posts on Reddit all the time and I'm, I'm so fucked up with those because yeah, that's how skin looks, that's how texture looks. And now I'm, I'm, I'm slightly changing topics. So back to the favorites. I did not rank an under eye corrector because I'm only using one at a time. And currently I do use the um, Bobbi Brown corrector in the shade Porcelain Bisque. My favorite concealer is the little sister or brother, whatever, the Chanel Supplemage Concealer. And I do have two shades. This is shade two, I don't know if you can tell, this is slightly more pink and shade 10 is slightly more yellow. If there is an award for worst packaging of concealer ever, it is definitely Supplemage Le Temps. It bothers me so much because this is so messy and you always end up with stuff everywhere. But the concealer is so good. I am still debating to declutter the shade 10 because you see how this is maybe a tad bit too dark and a tad bit too yellow, but you know, as soon as I start blending, this kind of disappears, which makes me super unsure whether or whether or not to declutter this concealer. 
So the cream bronzer that won this year is the Westman Atelier Contour, or like face trace. Yeah, the face trace contour stick in the shade Biscuit. Such a beautiful thing. I've used this actually all week long and oh, I love it. I just truly do love this contour stick. But do you know what I don't love? This specific brush. This goes to the trash right now. I think it's quite hard to find a decent cream contour brush because when I have a stick contour, I don't want to use the brush on the stick. I want to draw it on my face just as it is supposed to be. But I think that's good enough. Or is it? I think it is. The winner for cream blush was Rare Beauty in general. Not a specific shade, just Rare Beauty. And since this look is like an icy winter-like look, by night, kind of, let's use this beautiful dark blush. This is the shade Faith and this is, yeah, I actually have different versions of this kind of depth level in my blush collection because I just love these deep, aubergine plum blackened blushes and even me with my very light skin I can wear them too. So what I do is I take two dots, yes two, I'm, I'm very brave, and the trick is to use the designed brush for this. <laughs> then it works. So what I do is I just tap 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 then I swipe a bit, tap tap tap, swipe swipe, tap 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 and so on. And do you see the magic? Poof. The winner for Cream Highlight was the Pat McGrath Skin Fetish Duo. And since this look, again, is very wintry, I will use the shade Cyber Lotus. I don't know if you can tell because this highlighter side shifts to purple, and on the other side you have your classic clear balm. And this is for sure the only makeup item that I apply with my finger. Like bombs like this, always with finger. I think now you can see the shift. It's so fucking pretty. I love it. I really do. These skin fetish duo sticks are heavy in price. I think they retail for, I don't know, 50 or 60 euro. They are not, not cheap at all. But in my opinion, they are actually worth it. It's, but it's my opinion, you know. And I don't know if you can tell, but there is a beautiful purple shift. And now I just take some of the clear balm and tap this on top for just more sheen. In the category of under eye setting powder, the Dior Forever Cushion Powder in the shade Lavender 1. And someone commented under the video that this is sadly limited edition. It is not. This packaging is limited edition, yes, because it was the blooming, I don't know, whatever, their fall release. That to me looks more like a spring release. The packaging, this is limited edition, but this powder itself and the shade lavender is not limited. You can get this in the regular Forever Cushion line. The only difference is that you do not have this uh, like fabric here on top. You have a squishy top. So I'm going over my concealer once more so that I can blend out the creases that just developed. And now I just set that with a puff. I just really developed into a puff girl this year. All loose powders I only work in now with a puff, but I still cannot say goodbye to a brush because I kind of feel like this this distributes in like a second step a bit finer and better. So I'm now finishing the eyes and remember not throwing away this brush because I start actually with this brush and whatever is left here, I just start to apply on my lower lashes and I slightly flick this outwards like a little wing and then I connect it with the lashes, just like that. Tiniest wing ever. And I bring this on the lower lashes all the way inwards. Hmm, I thought I have a dark blue liner, but apparently I haven't. So let's take purple. This is Urban Decay Vice. And I apply this on the waterline. And I take a small pencil brush and tap back into the icicle shade. And I use this to blend underneath this dark so that it has like a winter glowing effect going on. 
I would love to apply something deeper into the crease, but it kind of has a vibe like this too, doesn't it? So for Inner Corner Holland, I'm using the shade Wonderland. Wonderland just looks exactly like snow. This is such a perfect shade for this look. Oh, this palette just won my heart. So the face setting palette that won was the Milk Blur and Set. This unfortunately is discontinued, so you cannot get this anymore. So let me show you the number two, and it's the Givenchy Prism Libre. This is my second favorite powder out of them all, but to stay true to the topic of the video, the best of the bestest, I will use this one. When they discontinued this powder like one and a half years ago, I think, I was not sure why, because... Um, this was a favorite of a lot of people, I feel like, at least here in Germany, like in the German beauty space. This was actually the reason or like the, the, the way how I discovered this or like milk in general. I was not interested in milk makeup until I saw a German YouTuber talking about how this is just her favorite powder. And then I tried it and I immediately bought a second one when I heard that they discontinue this. But now that they kind of re-released a lot of things that they formerly discontinued or brought out new things in topics, the reason is quite clear. They just sold themselves for a cheap price. That, that was basically the thing. They wanted to have more money, so they brought out new products with less product in them, but for more money. I did not give you real brow favorites because my brow routine is quite um, like boring, but I'm currently using the, let me grab it, the brow, what's it called? Anastasia Beverly Hills, the brow definer. It's the one with the triangular uh, tip, then brow powder. And the best brow gel actually is the Too Faced Fluff and Hold. This is so good that I do have a backup. I bought this before I went into the no buy because I just cannot imagine me without this uh, brow uh, gel. It is really, really good. Who would have thought from Too Faced? Who would have thought? The powder bronzer category was won by the Tom Ford Soleil Glow Bronzer. I always want to say Soleil powder. I don't know. It's the Glow Bronzer and I specifically used the shade 02 Terra because this has a slightly cool undertone while the shade number one, I don't know, what's it called? Ambra? Could it be Ambra? I don't know. But number one is a bit too warm and I just think that this would look like um, poop on my face. The powder blush category was won by House Labs. And I'm using the blush that actually made me fall in love with House Labs is this one. I know, what a joke, because they all look the same on the outside. This is Dragon Fruit Base. This is the on-trend, viral, cool tone, blue-based pink. I love blushes like that. I have them now from several brands. But in terms of formulation, pigment, feeling, and excitement level, House Labs just won this, like, with no, no competition. And I don't know if the camera can pick this up, but when I look in the mirror and turn my hat, the um, Pat McGrath Cyber Lotus Cream Highlight is peeking through those powder sessions or powder layers. And it just looks really awesome combined with this blush on top. So for highlight, I actually have two to choose from because when it comes to the face palettes, the Blend Bunny Noctilucent palette made it to the number one, which is an all highlighter palette with duochromes. But for single highlighters, it was the Chanel's Le Symbols, that one. I have the Comet or Comet symbol, whatever, and the shade is pearly white. I love this highlighter so much that I still go to the Chanel website and think of purchasing the same shade, but with a different imprint. That's my love level for this. And I decided to use the Symbols highlight because this is more of a glistening snow vibe here and that's what I'm going for today. I'm still not happy with the depth level in the crease. I, I, I kind of think of really adding a darker shade. But first off, I'm tapping into Frost and I use this as a brow bone highlight. This is a very nice light blue with a slightly transparent base, I would say, but beautiful blue iridescent shimmers in them. That's at least what I see. Maybe I am weird, maybe I'm completely wrong, but that's what I see and what I just feel. And I'm, I'm, I'm not happy with how the crease looks because it kind of looks like I have like only one area, which can be nice, 
but not what I want for this look. I just need a bit depth in this look. So I'm taking the shade Peaceful and a very, very small blending brush that is also quite long. This is a refer number 13 if you're looking for something like that. And then I, with a very, very light hand, go through the crease. I don't want to disturb the shimmers too much. My goal is to create depth. And that's it. I don't want to like really add color, just depth. Do you see the difference between this and this eye? Maybe I'm crazy, but I see it. I didn't really mention the favorite setting spray. I think I said, or did I say anything? I don't think I said anything at all. But the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Spray is very, very high up there. But I only have one setting spray open at the time and I'm currently using and actually trying for the very first time this LH Onset Lasting Setting Spray, LH Cosmetics, the brand. And I've used this only once. The only thing I can tell you is that the sprayer here is awesome. The finishing powder that made it to the top was the, or is the Shantakai, uh, <laughs> the perfect blur. The Sizzley one is called Blur Expert and this is the perfect blur. I always just mess them up with each other. And what I do with my finishing powder, I love to use this uh, refer, the one that had the special engraving here, I don't know what it's called, but I use this brush and I swipe it through it and then I very, very lightly just apply this in the center of my face, just like that. Finishing powder is not there to add more coverage or whatever. It's just here to blur. I also did not rank mascara because I just go through them so quick and I have a mascara like backup drawer that is overflowing. But the ones that I'm currently really enjoying are the Hourglass Unlock Mascara, the Instant Extensions one. It's a really good one. And, and it is just so embarrassing and that's circling back to my no buy video because I just have too much in certain things, especially the backup drawer. I have it as a Maya rubber lash. I found it in my backup drawer. I was 100% sure that I did not buy this from Farfetch when this came out. Apparently I did, over a year ago. It's still going strong, so no problem. I just opened it, I don't know, like a week ago, and I really enjoy this mascara. It's, it's a fucking good one. I love this mascara, and come on, I love this packaging. It is, Mm, I want to lick it. So in the lip liner category, I rank the Charlotte Tilbury uh, lip liners the bestest. So I'm using Charlotte Tilbury Lip Cheat in Iconic Nude. And the lip product, that one, I did not divide into lip gloss or lipstick. I just ranked all my lip products. Is the Natasha Denona My Dream Lipstick. This is the shade Natasha 11 and B. I love this, the best nude lipstick ever, and actually a lipstick I wanna wear every single day. And actually, besides, for example, Black Honey, a lipstick I see myself using up completely, if I would use it constantly, which I force myself actually not to do. I mean, come on, look at how beautiful this is. And it feels really nice. I have currently very, very dry lips, but this feels super comfy and nourishing, which I like. And there you have it. According to my ranking, this is the best makeup look that I can get in 2023. And I have to admit, I'm right. <laughs> this is an awesome look. The combo of these products, because I never before put these number ones in a combo, like the, the foundation and the primer, yes. The foundation and the glow thing, yes, 100%. But, this overall with the look and with the cheeks and with the lips and everything, not before. And I cannot stop staring at myself because it is, it's stunning. Is it a winter lake or like a frozen lake in the nighttime? Uh, probably not, but I'm very happy with my choice of only using the winter sauces all over the lid. So what do you think? Are these really top-notch products and how does your top 23 look like look 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 like how does your top 23 look look like <laughs> that's a hard sentence let me please know down below thank you for staying here this long the good thing is unlike other youtubers the alamus does not end that means you still get videos until December 31st and actually even January 1st because it's like a 
like no break uh, into the new year because we will do the regular stuff beginning in January. Can't wait to do that with you. I'm very, very happy that you are here. Make sure you subscribe and I see you tomorrow.